Hi, my name's Hugh, and uh, if you've been following my blog, you'll know that I'm a PhD researcher from Royal Holloway University of London in the Geography Department, where I research the interactions, the relationships between boycott movements, anti-apartheid, and anti-slavery. Uh, today, I'd like to give you a little flavour of uh, an interview I did with Isal Duplessis, the former leader of Boycott Outspan Action in his home in Sweden in January 2011. Uh, during the interview, Esau talks about what apartheid means to him, um, and he gives a sense of uh, his experiences as an anti-apartheid activist and the formative uh, embodied kinds of oppression that apartheid for him involved. I hope you enjoy the interview. And what does apartheid mean to you? Well, to me personally, apartheid means the total denial by one person of the humanity of another one. One person or group of people under apartheid look upon another group as subhuman. And that leads to many different consequences as far as work is concerned, living conditions, and marriage, and ever, where even the place of burial is determined. And also that is evidenced in the terminology by the oppressing pressure group is, is used. For instance, referring to the group which is, which is looked as subhuman, by calling them names like the native Bantu, Kafa. In the terminology used, it's very evident when a person is subjugated to an inferior status. And to me, that is the essence of apartheid psychologically, economically, socially, and every possible aspect. Even in religion, a distinction is made. And you see, apartheid is, is a form of extreme racism. And the moment anybody makes a difference or a distinction between human beings, then it's already the beginning of being busy on the wrong way. You can take an example, an and disabled person of the same group, the intolerance with which society looks upon such a person. I remember last year when Anne Marie's leg was broken. For two months she couldn't work without walking sticks. Yeah. And then she went to school with walking sticks, but she could use her leg to some extent. Uh, for one, the trains were not made for invalid people to step into and to leave the train and in the afternoon the train was always full and the impatience with which she was treated by people of the same group as she is the, in, in the way she slowly comes down the stairway and also entering in the bus even the impatience of a bus driver mm. when she enters the bus show a ticket and slowly moves to a seat and sometimes she, she starts driving because she, she was always waiting to be last, not in order not to to delay other passengers. Yeah. And there she was last, but he started driving before or she found the seat, for instance. Yeah. And and that is what already the beginning of making a distinction. And from there, or you can imagine if she was a person of a discriminated group considered to be subhuman. Yeah. what serious consequences that would have developed. Yeah. And, th and that is what I mean by the moment a distinction is made, one is already busy in the wrong way. And apartheid, of course, carried that to extreme, extreme extent. Yeah. That, in a short in a nutshell, is what I see apartheid to be in practice. Yeah. Thank you very much.